This is the 15 30 second spit. Now I'm just going to go in until I feel my drill hit the bottom of the hole. I'm not watching the, uh, the depth on the twill. There, I can very easily feel that was on the bottom of the hole, and I'll back it off. First, I'll show you how to hand ream. I've got the hand reamer started into the bushing, and uh, notice that it's uh, supported on the other end by uh, a center. This is a, a ball bearing center, but it could be a dead center. And then we're just going to use an adjustable wrench to. Uh, uh, do the reaming and we're going to push it in using the tailstock hand wheel just a little bit each time. This is kind of a laborious process but uh, I'm going to feed the tailstock hand wheel in at the same time that I'm rotating the, uh, the reamer and remember you never want to run a reamer backwards. Never run it backwards but we'll, we'll start that and I'm just going to go in a few revolutions, but you would continue that, but that, you know, that's going to take you five minutes to do. Now when you back the reamer out, and you know, you're at the bottom of the hole, uh, pull the tailstock out of the way, and as you withdraw the reamer, continue to slowly rotate it in a clockwise direction. You never want to run them in reverse. Okay, I'm going to take this out, and I'm going to ream it with a uh, uh, regular reamer. Machine reamer. Okay, the chucking reamer is uh, held in a three-jaw chuck. I already put some Mystic Metal Mover on there. I'm just going to uh, slowly feed it in as if I was drilling a hole. And remember, I'm taking off at about uh, a 32nd of an inch. We'll back it off and you'll see that there's uh, chips on there. Almost used plenty of lubricant on uh, Reamers. You can see that I removed quite a bit of metal. I probably could have could have got by with that uh, uh, larger drill bit because it looks like I removed quite a bit. I'm going to check the hole for size. I've taken this end mill here and I miked it, and it, uh, it's exactly even. Though this is a 9/16 end mill, but it has a a uh, half inch shank on it so it's exactly a half inch so I'm using that as my plug gauge just to verify that my hole is a uh, half inch now you can mic it and do to, uh, you know this uh, measurement other ways but this uh, this starts at, it's, it's a little tight but it goes in there and uh, so the hole is fine now uh, we're going to countersink a little bit and there's a couple of ways uh, to do that you can just take your uh, burr knife and hold it on there while the uh, stock is rotating or you can take uh, a large countersink and uh, countersink it a little bit so let's try that so you would just hold a burr knife in there or a file like that and that'll give you a little bit of a uh, chamfer or a countersink or of course one of these that one's too large I'm just holding it in there by hand. Perhaps you can see that. That put a nice little countersink on there. It makes it look finished and it's going to allow your uh, shaft to enter up just a little easier. Those little uh, finishing touches are important. Just about ready to start my first cut, and I put some bluing on the work, and I've uh, laid a uh, layout line there at seven eighths. Checked with my uh, depth gauge, or you can use a ruler or whatever you want. I've got the feed set for about six thousandths per revolution. The speed is around six hundred. Uh, I've got a micrometer handy, and remember, I'm going to take this down to seven fifty point seven fifty, but not in one pass. Now, uh, in addition to the line here, I have uh, set my depth stop 
you may or may not have one if the camera can find it here yeah right there I've got that set so that uh, when I go in uh, to the full depth of 7 8 the carriage will hit the stop and uh, now if it's not right on I'll take a, a measurement I always like to take trial cuts but then I'll take a measurement and I can move this uh, in or out to uh, uh, fine-tune that these linear dimensions are not real critical remember uh, usually when a uh, measurement is expressed in fractions on a blueprint uh, it's not that accurate so usually we're trying to get within about a 30 second of an inch I'm setting my own tolerance here but I'm gonna try to get it within about a 30 second here's a view from behind measured it I'm about uh, not about I am seven hundred and fifty eight thousandths so I've got eight thousandths more to go now I have slowed down the feed to about two thousandths I have uh, changed the spindle speed to about seven hundred I sped that up just a little bit so since I have eight thousandths to take off I'm going to sit uh, feed my cross feed in just six thousandths and take a trial cut. Notice that it's feeding quite a bit slow. So I think I'll feed it in the other two thousandths and go for broke. I would like to machine it down to the, rather, uh, the final dimension rather than go in there with a file and hammer cloth, which uh, some people do. of the plans a little bit too. Alright. Now I'm going to get the carriage out of the way and I'm going to take my pile and just give it a couple strokes here across the corner to chamfer it. Now when you use a pile, be very careful you don't run it into the chuck and have it thrown back at you. you also be absolutely sure that you never use a pile 